Welcome to the Air Gun Show. We've got a night shooting special this week. I'm going to be taking a close look at the Wolf variant of the Nightsight Artec, but before that, I'm going to try to prove that it's still possible to bag bunnies by lamplight. Well, right after dark tonight in the hope of lamping a few rabbits. Now, the market is absolutely awash with night vision gear, some fantastic stuff, but I think it's easy to forget that conventional lamping equipment still works as well as it ever did. So hopefully we'll prove that this evening. Typically the conditions really are against us and it seems like the curse of the air gun show has struck again because whenever we arrange to come out with the camera at night, we never get the conditions that we want. Now given the choice, I would go for an evening with plenty of cloud cover to make it properly dark and a bit of a breeze to create some ambient noise. And tonight we really do have the absolute opposite. We've got a very clear sky, we're almost casting shadows on the ground and there's barely any breeze. Now what that means is the rabbits have quite a good chance of spotting us approaching and if they don't see us, they'll probably hear us because there's just no ambient noise, no sign of the wind passing through the trees and over the fields to mask the sign of our approach. But either way, we'll give it our best shot. On the subject of keeping quiet, it really does pay to wear the most silent clothes you possibly can when you're out shooting after dark, especially when there's not much ambient noise. So this evening, I've got on about the softest pair of shooting trousers that I've got so there's less risk of them rustling, rubbing, and just generally making a noise while I'm creeping around the fields tonight. And also, I've done away with my usual welly boots and gone for a pair of lace-up boots, which are just a little bit closer fitting and shouldn't slop about so much. Now also, you don't want anything jangling or clicking, so you've got to really think about what you're carrying. You don't really want car keys in your pockets because they're going to make a noise. Now another thing about the car, and something that I've noticed a lot of shooters overlook, is slamming car doors or slamming the boot when you arrive. Now if it's a quiet night like tonight, and you slam those doors really loudly, you're just giving the rabbits an advanced warning, and they're going to be right on edge as soon as you hit the fields. Another point which probably seems pretty ironic tonight with me doing all of this chat, is trying not to talk too much if you've got company with you. Now, that's the main reason that I tend to hunt mostly on my own if I can. It just keeps disturbance down so much more. Now, obviously tonight, I've also got Nicky, the cameraman in tow, but we'll just have to do the best that we can. And my gun choice for tonight is the trusty old Daystate Mark IV. Now the fact that I prefer to use this gun in single shot mode could make reloading a bit fiddly in the dark, but in all honesty, I've been using this one now for well over seven years and I've just got a knack for it. I can do it without really even thinking about it. Um, this gun is just deadly accurate, so I always trust in it on a difficult night like tonight. I know it's dependable and also being FAC rated, if I do need to take longer shots, I know I've got that extra knockdown power. Right, so my lamp choice for this evening is the Tracer Lead Ray F900. Now I spoke a lot about this in the review a few weeks ago, but really the key thing with this lamp is it's small, lightweight, yet still casts a very long, tight beam with very little light spillage. Um, it's also got interchangeable LED heads, so you can swap the torch head, change colours without having to use light reducing filters. Another feature that I really like about this lamp is the angle adjustable mount, which enables you to tweak the angle of the torch to ensure that the beam is perfectly aligned with your sight picture. Another item that I've got with me tonight is my shooting sticks. Now, 
Assuming that it is going to be difficult, I don't want to also be distracted by wondering whether Nicky's lined up for the kill shot when I'm ready to shoot. Now, what I've done to get around that is set up with the scope cam tonight, but anybody that watches regularly will know that I'm not particularly keen on having to shoot through the screen of a camcorder. So just to make life a little bit easier, I've got the shooting sticks just to give me that support and hopefully keep the shots nice and steady. So, all we need now is a few rabbits. Let's go and see what we can find. What I was looking for then was just any reflected eye shine from any rabbits out in the field. Now, not surprisingly, there was nothing out there. We're still very close to where I did all of the opening chat, so we'll move on a bit further. Fingers crossed we'll see a few out. Actually a couple of rabbits out feeding here. They're a little bit far away for the shot. So I'm gonna try and stalk in a little bit closer. Hopefully get close enough to take a shot. I just about managed to get a clear shot at that one's head over the top of the grass. It's down and it's got us off the mic. Let's go and pick it up.
if only they were all that obliging. That one was sat nicely out in the open, really good clear shot, and it sat tight while I crept in. So that's another one in the bag. And that is another handy feature with a lamp over night vision kit, is that you have got a source of light for picking up shot quarry. That one had its head down very low amongst the tussocks for a while there. Wanted it to sit up, so I took a risk, gave it a bit of a click. Now that could have made it run in, but fortunately it sat up trying to locate the source of that sound and I've managed to plant a pellet right in the back of its head. Right, at this stage in the proceedings, I'd usually send Nikki packing and head out on my own to do some proper undisturbed hunting. But to be honest with you, it's been a really difficult night. What's gonna look like about 10 minutes to you in the edited package has been several hours. We've really struggled. One thing that we have achieved though, is that I wanted to prove that lamping tactics still work. There are more affordable and simpler alternative to night vision. And quite frankly, if you can go out and bag bunnies in conditions like this, it should work practically any time. A tough night's lamping there, but I still managed to bring a few rabbits to book. Now, it's the Air Gun Show news. This is the Air Gun Show News, brought to you by Valley Arms Shooting Supplies. The latest report on gun crime is out, and the good news is, crime's still low. The level of firearms crime increased by 7%, but it's still less than half of what it was a decade ago. Also, Less than 10% of crimes are committed with sporting guns. The government said the latest figures should be viewed as part of a general downward trend in gun crime. Jen McIntosh is climbing the world air rifle rankings. The ISSF has produced its end of year ranking table and Jen's up to 24th. This comes after strong performances at the Rio test event and the Olympic Games themselves. Olympic gold medalist Jenny Thrasher has the number one spot. Shona McIntosh, Mike Bamsey, Victoria Mullin and Christian Callahan also provide British representation in the World Air Gun Rankings. Interest in shooting is way up, according to Basque's firearms team, which is taking more calls than ever. 
The team took 910 calls for advice in October. That's an increase of 60% year on year. That follows a September that was the service's busiest ever month. Busk said most of the calls were for help dealing with delays in certificate renewals. So if you've got an FAC air gun, it could pay to get in touch. Dial the number on screen now. And finally, an air gun has become a piece of Olympic history. Double Olympic medalist Nicolo Campriani has donated his air rifle to the Olympic Museum in Switzerland just a couple of months after he used it to take gold in Rio. It's no ordinary rifle. Campriani designed it himself along with a small Italian firm. He also donated his shoes, which he says he's been wearing in competition for 16 years. Let's hope the museum gives them a quick spray before putting them on display. That was the Egg and Show News. Night vision kit has come an extremely long way over the last few years and Night Sight has been at the forefront of that development. This week I'm taking a closer look at the Wolf variant of their new Artec system, which I've been using a lot over recent months. The Night Sight works by means of a night vision camera which sees through your optics and sends the image to a 3.5 inch screen which sits on top of your scope. Because you're using your usual setup, all aim points remain the same so there should be no need to re-zero. The kit includes the complete night sight setup, plus mounts, battery and charger, and comes in a very tough carry case. It did initially take me a while to become accustomed to the head-up shooting position needed to look at the screen. It does feel a little strange when shooting freehand, but with the gun mounted on a bipod, sticks or even on your lap, it works absolutely brilliantly. You set up the night sight by fixing the screen and illuminator module to the top of your scope. Mounts are supplied to fit 25 and 30 mm tubes. Then choose the correct rubber sleeve to fit the rear lens of your scope and attach the night vision camera. Attach the rechargeable battery unit, plug in the power and screen leads and you're ready to go. It takes less than two minutes. The Artec camera features a very clever external focusing system. It's a lot easier to use than the setup on earlier models and means you can quickly get your crosshairs pin sharp on the screen. You can also adjust the brightness of the LCD screen by using the dial at the bottom of the monitor. The infrared illuminator is built into the screen module, so there's no need to splash out on an add-on designator. You adjust the power of the infrared beam by means of the dial on top of the unit. The Viper enables you to see in the dark out to 100 metres. The Wolf, this one, enables you to see out to 300 metres. And the Eagle has a detection range of up to 500 metres, making it excellent for long range spotting. I really like the Artex One Touch recording system. Just press the record button and whatever's on the screen is recorded direct to the onboard micro SD card. It's so much easier than struggling with trailing wires and external recorders, and we've really appreciated it when recording night hunts for the air gun show. The unit even features built-in Wi-Fi to transmit the sight picture live to your phone or tablet via the free Night Player app. With a range of around 10 meters, it's a great way to share the action with a shooting mate. In the field, the night sight is very easy to use. It's really just a matter of flicking the power switch on and off. Image quality is remarkably good, and that makes for clear quarry identification and very accurate shooting. You can probably see a lot of light in our nighttime footage, but that's because we're using a night vision camera. The infrared beam is virtually invisible to the naked eye, so that means it can't be seen by your quarry. The Night Sight Artec costs £749 for the Viper, £949 for the Wolf and £1,149 for the Eagle. If you already have the Night Sight setup, you can buy the R camera module for £249. Reliability counts for everything when you're hunting at night and the Artec combines excellent performance with easy operation. Not only do you get the stealth of night vision, you also get that brilliant one-touch recording system, 
It really is a fantastic piece of kit. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.